Today, I'm going to show you guys how to train a WAN 2.2 image LoRa. In case you didn't know, WAN 2.2, the state-of-the-art open source video model, can also be used for image LoRa's and generation. And it's very good, to the point where it's replaced Flux for my day-to-day -day image generation. So today, I'm going to show you guys how you can train your own LoRa for free, assuming that you have a powerful enough GPU, how you can do it on a cloud service where you rent a GPU, and how you can train a character LoRa on a platform that I started using. This should give you enough options to decide which route you want to take when it comes to training your own character LoRa. Now, as usual, I like to show everything on the cloud GPU that I rent. However, everything that I do on this platform, you can do on your own machine as long as your GPU is powerful enough. So to make things incredibly easy for you on RunPod, I have a template that I have set up here, which I will make available down in the description below. If you click on that link, you'll get taken to a page like this where you can select your GPU. I tend to like to use an RTX 6000 Pro or the H100. Once you've selected a GPU, this little window will appear down here. The template will be preloaded. From there, you can just deploy on demand. You don't need to do anything else. However, if you're following along at home on your own machine, you need to set up and install Musubi Tuner first. So to do that and to get started, you need to first download and set up the tuner. You can do that by going to the Koya SSB Tuner repo on GitHub. Again, link will be down below. What you want to do is you want to grab that URL, open up the terminal in the directory where you want to install it. You can either do that by opening up your terminal and CD to the directory that you want to get to. Or if you're on Linux, you open up that folder, right click, open terminal. And on Windows, you type in CMD on the little directory window or address bar at the top of your folder. Once you're in the desired directory, type in git clone and drop in the URL, press enter and everything will start downloading. Once you've done that, you should have a bunch of files and folders. And the important thing here is we want the Musubi Tuner one. If you go into that, it should look like this. On the GitHub, just if you're following along, if you click down here on SRC Tuner, you'll see that these are the same files and folders that we want to work with. Once we're in here, we want to set up and download the required models that we're going to train with. I will put all the links down in the description below, but basically what we want to do is when you're here in the folder, you want to go into dataset, want to go into models and in models, we're going to separate our diffusion models, which is the WAN models, our text encoders and our VAE. So let's start from the VAE and work our way from easiest to most complex. VAE is very simple. You'll have here a VAE split files and then a VAE folder where you'll have the WAN 2.1 VAE. Very simple. And yes, you have VAE split files VAE. So VAE is twice. Then we jump up to the text encoders where you've only got the T5 text encoder. I have the BF16 one here. We want the top of the line model. And then in diffusion models, we have split files, diffusion models again, and here we have both the high and low noise models. Now, what's really important to note is when using Musubi Tuner, we are actually training the model twice. We are making a training for the high noise and a training for the low noise. And then we then use them together when generating images. I highly suggest you check out this video over here where you'll learn a little bit more about WAN 2.2. Once you've got the model set up, congratulations. We are more than halfway through to training your first LoRa. So you'll see here, I've already got some images and files already set up. To train a LoRa, what you need is you need a series of images of the character or person that you're going to train on. And each image needs its own text file with a description of what is in that image. This is probably the most annoying part of the entire process. However, to achieve this, there is a free space on Hugging Face that you can use to caption your images using Joy Caption Alpha 2. This is what I use to caption. You can also download and install this locally on your own machine. I'll cover that in a separate video. For today, the way that it works is you can go ahead and drop your image in over here. Let's try this out. So let's say that this is one of the images that we're going to caption. We can set here the particulars that we want. I usually just leave it as descriptive. Caption length, again, I leave the default. And then there's a few extra options here that are particular to the LoRa that you're going to train. So for example, if you want to keep it PG, 
you can select that one. If you want to include information about lighting, you can go ahead and select that and so on. This is really important because you can tweak and adjust this to how you like to prompt and the types of images that you've put in. So for example, if you put in images where you are photographing the same person from different angles, you probably want to include information about the camera angles and you can then leverage that in the LoRa when you're prompting. Another thing that's really important is if there's text in the image, for example, text on t-shirts, where you want the model to ignore it because you're not really gonna be using it to prompt text or you don't particularly care about it, you can select this over here. If you have a mix of safe for work and non safe for work images, you can select this one over here and that will allow you to specify whether the image is safe for work or not. And that's very important because if you are using the same model to generate images that are or are not safe for work, you can specify that in the prompting. Ultimately, what it comes down to is you need to think about how much detail do you want in the prompting and how many images are you including in the data set? The more images and the more varied it is, the more detail you want in the captions. As when you're prompting, using that terminology is gonna reference those images to make sure that you end up with a desired result. If that's not entirely clear and you'd actually like a dedicated video specific to captioning and captioning techniques and particulars, please do let me know down in the comment section below and I'll prepare a video just on captioning techniques. Finally, you can add in here the person or character's name. This is incredibly important as we want this to be on every single caption. Every single text file of this character needs to have their name on it. This is how the model knows that this face and physique belongs to this person. It's because we're putting that word in every single image. So let's give her the name Lydia, and then you can go ahead and caption it. That will queue up the image. Once the GPU becomes available, you'll get the caption. Now, the annoying thing here is that you have to do this image by image. So you can see here the prompt that was used. You can see the caption. We're gonna grab that, open up a text editor, drop that in and save it as a text file. The text file should be the exact same name as the image that you're saving it in. So let's go back to my example. You can see here, I've got a one, so I'm a one for the text file and so on. So each text file belong to the image and that's how the model knows what applies with which. It is incredibly cumbersome and I will actually try and release a template for Joy Caption on RunPod where you can just drop your entire data set and then it'll just go through everything. So if I have that done by the time this video comes out, the description will be down below. If not, please do like and subscribe. Check out my newsletter, which will also be linked down below. Or subscribe to me on Patreon. Once that information and that template is available, I will announce it on all of those platforms. Once you've got all of that set up, you're gonna go ahead and open up a terminal. Now, with your terminal, make sure that you're in the Musubi Tuner folder. And we're gonna drop in a command which has a bunch of parameters. Again, this will be down in the comment section below. And these parameters will basically tell Musubi Tuner what are the settings it needs to apply when training the model. So let's go through them one by one. So the first thing we need to do is we need to run this command where we are calling out Python Musubi Tuner when cache latents. And this creates the latents based on our data set. We add on a couple of flags, so dataset config, and then we specify the directory of this database.toml, which will be in your dataset folder along with all your other images. So if you look over here, you'll see a dataset toml. If we try and open that, there will be some details about the training that we're doing. So you can see here, we're specifying a resolution. We're telling it that the extensions are .txt files and so on and so forth. You shouldn't need to touch this. If this is missing when you download or install the GitHub repo, I will have a file available over on my Patreon. It will be a free Patreon post, so you don't need to subscribe or anything to get access to it. And go ahead and drop it in over here. Then after that, we are setting a flag for Vey. This is the directory of where the Vey is. You can, again, just copy and paste this from the description down below, and it should work as is. Go ahead and press enter and it'll take a little while to prepare the latents. Now, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna paste the next command in the description down below, which basically calls the text encoder output. And like the latents, we are preparing the latents with the text encoder. It references the dataset.toml and we specify here T5, the location of the model. Keep in mind that if you make any changes to the data set or any changes to the text files, you will need to rerun both of these again. This is required to prepare the data set for training. And with that, you're finally ready to train your model. However, the next step is the massive command, 
that is going to start the training. And there are a few parameters and flags that I want to go through before we do that. Now, if you're not interested in that, you could just copy and paste the massive command down below and just change two things and you're good to go. I've split it up here in a text file so it's easier to read, but ultimately all you want to do is go right to the end of the command where you see output name, metadata tape title, and metadata author, and just change them to the name of the Laura that you want. In this case, I have it called Wan Lydia, and just change your author name to you. Go ahead and press enter and it should start training. However, if you're interested in diving a little bit deeper and understanding some of these parameters, let's go through them. I'm not going to go through all of them, but if you did want me to do a deep dive into each of these parameters, please do let me know down in the comment section below and we will do a Musubi Trainer deep dive into these parameters. So going through them very quickly, right from the top, here we are indicating the number of CPU threads per process. We leave this as one. We're specifying the task. In this case, it's a text to video 14 billion. This is incredibly important. So this is where we specify the model that we're using. Here it says dash dash DIT. Right now we've got it set up for low noise. Once the training is completed, you will need to copy this command and change this over to high noise and run the entire command again to get your high noise model. You'll also want to probably adjust your output name to have high and low as a addendum. So when Lydia high, when Lydia low, so you know which model is which. Okay, over here we've got the VE set to the WAN 2.1, no need to touch that. Your T5 text encoder is already set, no need to touch that. Our dataset configuration is dataset.toml, no need to touch that. The only reason why you might want to is let's say in the Musubi Tuner folder over here in dataset, let's say I've got multiple data sets for different characters as I have here son of a one what you might want to do is just come over here and just add in that name so and then have a config file inside each of those folders or you could just have a master one over here if you're using the same one for all of them and it'll just use the same data set .toml for everything Okay, over here, we're just specifying a few other things that we need. Xformers, mixed precision, FPA base, optimizer type, learning rate. This is one of those that you might want to consider adjusting. Here we've put three to the power of minus four. In case you're wondering what that looks like, it's three to the power of minus four. So that ends up looking like 0 0.0003, all of these zeros and a three. That means that the model is learning at this rate, every step that it goes through the images. I probably wouldn't touch this unless you're also modifying the number of steps. I've had relatively good success with these parameters, regardless of the number of images that I use. However, as a general rule, the more images that you have, the more steps that you want and the slower learning rate. So if we wanted to make this slower, the best thing you probably want to do is go to something like online calculator and maybe change your steps to 3e minus 41 or 401 no yeah and kind of add a decimal you know 4.1 you can see here that by making it 4.1 this number just gets smaller oops 0.2 gets smaller and so on so you probably don't want to change it from that four maybe just add a decimal and add an 0.1 or an 0.5 if you've done any experimentation with adjusting the learning rate and the number of steps with the number of images that you're using, please do let me know in the comments down below or over on the Discord. This information is not just useful for me, it's useful to anybody who watches this video or is asking for help over on the Discord. So please do let us know, this is incredibly important. Okay, the rest of the parameters, we don't want to touch them, gradient checkpointing, gradient accumulation step, max data loader network workers, network module, network dim, network alpha, time step sampling shift, discrete flow shift, max train epochs. Okay, so, the max train epochs and the save every number of epochs, this one is important. Epochs is the number of times that the process goes through of learning. Again, we want to increase this slightly with a larger data set of images and when we reduce the learning rate. So we want to slow down the learning rate. We want to increase the number of epochs. And what's incredibly powerful is save every n epochs. What this means is that every kind of loop that the model does in training and understanding itself and the data that is trying to learn it will spit out a model so 
let's say that we want to spit out a model every 25 epochs at the end of this you will actually get four models because we're doing 100 epochs every 25 epochs it'll spit out a model this is really useful because let's say you want to increase the number of epochs you want to decrease the learning rate and you want to see how the model performs at different epochs so you'd put this out there and you'd maybe get a model at 25 epochs at 50 epochs 75 at 100 and let's say we want to push it up to 125 you can now compare how the model at 75 performs how the model at 100 performs and how the model at 125 performs and then continue to fine tune from there the annoying thing is if you're actually only interested in let's say the five or ten epochs up or down from the hundred you know you could change this to spit out an epoch a model every five epochs but then you end up with a model every five epochs so you need to throw away the first 18 models and then just keep like the last four or five and compare and test a seed again you can leave it at five you can put in another random number this is just basically the seed at which the model inputs and removes noise we want to leave everything else the same optimizer arguments max grad norm lr scheduler uh you could try changing the scheduler again this is one of those where you can experiment this is the same scheduler that we modify when generating images on comp ui euler and so on again i usually just leave it on polynomial if you are feeling particularly experimentative and you've got the credit or time to spend on your gpu go ahead and try a different scheduler however you'll also need to adjust the power and the ratio which we're not going to get into today finally over here we've got the output directory if you are training multiple characters and you want to separate them by folder you can add on the character name over here as an output then we specify the output name here we've added hi the metadata title the metadata author copy all of that and drop that into your terminal and press enter and that will start the training process as i mentioned earlier you got to do it once for the low model once for the high model and once you've got both of them they'll be sitting over here in your musubi tuner output folder you can see over here i've got two outputs i've got my high noise and low noise model you can then go into comfy ui plug them in if you want to know more about the appropriate workflow to use i've got an excellent video over here where we jump into generating with wan 2.2 i've also got an all-in-one workflow where we've got image generation video generation upscaling and more which i dive deeper into this video if you found this helpful please do like and subscribe comment down below if you have any questions or even better come by the discord and ask your questions there so that everybody can benefit as mentioned earlier if you have more insight in adjusting the parameters for learning rate epochs and so on with using the wan 2.2 tuner please do come by and let us know down below or over on discord not just i will benefit but everybody who watches these videos and is part of the community if you really want to support the channel, please also do consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll have all of the files and everything that we've gone through on this video available there for download. It will be a free post, so you don't need to pay to subscribe, but I may add on a automatic installer for my Patreon subscribers if there is interest. So if you're a Patreon subscriber or you would like a installer for your own machine, please do let me know and I will make that available for the Patreon supporters. Thanks so much and I'll catch you guys on the next one.